Hey Steve in North Carolina, thanks for your order here. Uh, I think it, I think you are right. I think it is like radio number four. So that's awesome. Really appreciate it. And this is your microphone here. I already got a battery in it. Um, this one does have a small some cracking in the um, I guess you call this like the blister pack. Sometimes that happens. Uh, these come in boxes of 25 and then there's two of those in the master like they call it the master carton so sometimes i guess they they vibrate during shipment because they're just kind of sitting all layers of five there's like five across and then that's like one box um but anyways i mean it doesn't affect the performance of the mic at all it's just unfortunately some of them are like that and just i grab one out of the box and sometimes that's how they are so i'm going to set your radio up really quick and uh the as far as the volume on the mic that you asked about i always recommend running it somewhere like where it's at now <clears throat> if you need more gain obviously you can turn it up but uh i think it's good right around the volume level where it says volume here the little slider adjustment somewhere in there is usually good and then you can talk kind of closer into the microphone if you want to talk farther away then you can slide it up but then of course you're going to bring in the surrounding sound in your room or your vehicle or whatever the case may be but i think that right in that general area is a good good area to run it you can run the mic gain all the way up on this all the time that'll be fine it does have the nrc so you can turn that on and that will help especially on the tx side you can turn that up to like level two or three and that will help cut down on maybe a little background and then maybe you could turn that up more if you want to but it doesn't really need it so just leave that up to you there's really no wrong setting it's just if you turn it up too loud it's gonna it's gonna pick up a ton of background noise i don't know how it would sound because i've never really ran it past about like the l or somewhere in there about 50 percent or less is usually preferred somewhere from here to like here okay steve here's the radio here forgot to show that on the box Here's your transmit frequency on AM, so really good. Find that these usually are about plus or minus 20 hertz, so somewhere in that range is where they fall in. They're not adjustable, so there's nothing I can do with that range, but you're going to find that there's no other legitimate CB radio that's a real CB radio, not a 10 meter radio that someone's you know using as a CB. An actual CB like this is. Um, there's nothing that's going to come close to the frequency stability of this radio. This thing is the best there ever has been for a CB radio. And I uh, put money on that because no one else has ever came that close. They're all going to drift a little bit, 30, 40 hertz, some, sometimes more, depending on what kind of CB radio you have. So that's why the whole unlock clarifier thing became so popular because that was a way to compensate that a little bit. But it's not necessary on this radio and uh, no one to my knowledge knows how to do anything like that yet and even if they did i wouldn't want it on mine i think it's perfectly fine the way it is so i got the radio at four watts on the dead key on am this is uh power our power's all the way up i got the mic about between the o and the l on volume so that's what you're going to do there on uh, rf power with the peak uh peak power of the radio so about 20 20 to 25 somewhere in there is what the radio is going to do so it, it does a good amount of power um if you turn it down about halfway let's see this thing kind of about halfway is about 2.5 somewhere like that which is about right if you don't need to run that then you can run it lower so like that one two three one two three four check check so it still does pretty good you know for what it is maybe a little bit more audio there <clears throat> we'll go to fm actually we'll skip fm that's one watt all the way down about four all the way up so we'll go to sideband here key this back up turn this back up all the way you said you were going to run the other thing that you got from me probably so this would probably be you'd probably be able to just leave this all the way up here on sideband assuming 
So on side band, this is what it's going to do. Uh, between 20 and 30 usually is where they come in. Usually, actually between 25 and 30 is usually where they come in. So, you know, to to get uh, a good amount out of what you got, this is probably perfect. I mean, I actually think in the manual it says about 25 is perfect, but I think it can take up to like 35 or something. So, I think this radio will be a really good match for that. Okay, and then obviously if you turn the RF power down, it's going to do less. Okay, here's the radio on sideband. This is the two-tone test. So there it is right there. There it is up there. So that's good. Okay, here's AM. So, oops, got ahead of myself. Here's the carrier. There's the modulation. Here it is up here. We lower the RF power down. It's level five. You can see it's going to slowly drop. Which is normal. There it is here. So obviously we've dropped in power, so the carrier is off center a little bit. So we can bump that back up. Like that. It still looks good at level five. And at level one is the lowest power setting. So bump that back up. There's the low power. So all the way through it's nice and clean, which is what you want. Okay, here's the TX frequency on sideband, so that's pretty much perfect. This is lower side with 1K tone, that's why it drops down to 204. So I know most people would be assuming it would be 205, but with the tone you're going lower side, so you drop 1 kilohertz. If I go 700 hertz or something, it's going to drop it that much less. So there's why it's at 204.3 because it's uh, 700 hertz. So there you have it. Okay, Steve, it's all set. I'm going to get it ready to send to you. Again, I got the battery here in your mic. And uh, just a quick word of information on these. It's not recommended to sit here and take this screw and just torque it as hard as you can. You don't need to do that. Just simply just... Um, you know, obviously when you tighten it, you can feel it start to tight. And just maybe one more turn and that's it. You know, it's not good for anything to tighten it to the absolute maximum. So that's just a word of advice on these. I actually updated my website to say that because um, I think people are just oh, cranking them down too much. And there is a possibility this has SMD components. If you crank it down too much they are actually in the process of replacing the screw with a shorter screw but for now i still have a little the normal screw in here and if you over tighten it there's a good possibility you could damage the circuit in there so just don't tighten it down all you don't need to sit here and reef on it till it won't move anymore if you literally can feel me spinning or see me spinning it with my two fingers just spin it and just maybe like one more spin and that's it it's definitely not coming off so you don't need to torque these down all the way Okay, Steve, thanks a lot. 7-3, we'll get this heading your way.